fishy folks. I'm here near Grand Rapids, Michigan. I don't know what town I'm in at Bluefish Aquarium. This store is ginormous. Grab a snack and a beverage and stand by for awesomeness. Hi, fishy folks. I'm here at Bluefish Aquarium with one of the managers, Sean. Say hi, Sean. Hello. Can you tell us a little bit about the store? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, so here at Bluefish Aquarium, we pride ourselves really on three main categories. Number one is the knowledge and experience that we can offer to our customers. At the end of the day, there's nothing more important to us than our customers. We want to make sure that they're happy with their fish and their aquariums. Number two are the health of our animals. You know, we sell a lot of different things, not just fish. We also sell reptiles, we sell saltwater aquariums, the things that go in them, you know, everything under the sun. So we really want to make sure that the animals we are selling are healthy. It can be pretty tough to do when there's thousands and thousands of them, but we pride ourselves in the attention to detail and the efforts that we take, such as quarantining our fish, medicating them, uh, you know, setting them aside so that they're not uh, exposed to other animals, separating them in systems, you know, all of our freshwater tanks are single systems so that if there is an issue, it doesn't spread. Uh, and then number three, our final category, and this is a little bit of a tough one, but we pride ourselves on the ability to, to gather or to come in contact with um, a lot of different fish, a lot of oddball things, things that you won't find in a PetSmart, in a Petco, or another place like that. Um, we really pride ourselves on the ability to make our customers happy. And those three categories are the main ones. Can you give me an example of some of that oddball stuff? Um, sure. So in freshwater, we get in a lot of different types of stingrays, um, a lot of different types of puffers, you know, not just your standard pea puffers or South American puffers. Um, we get in different types of uh, larger cichlids, um, let's see, larger uh, predatory fish, you know, arowanas, arapaimas if people want them. You know, we don't order them and keep them here. We get them for people when they ask us, when they prove to themselves that they can not only keep them, but know what they're getting themselves into. Very cool. And so is this a bagging station right here? This is a bagging station in use. You know, we're currently in our store hours, so yeah. it's a little disarray, but yes. It's we... actually very busy. <laughs> it's seven o'clock here in Michigan, and I've been here for about 45 minutes talking, looking at the store, and it's pretty busy for a fish store on a Tuesday. Now, would you believe this is actually our slow season? September's one of our slowest months in the entire year. Really? Well, mm -hmm. good for you. Yeah. So I see a couple bettas here and some sure. snacks. Sure. I yeah. always I always tell my viewers get grab a snack and a beverage. So always. I see you already have a snack always. and a beverage. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And so we order a lot of bettas and sometimes they don't always come in super healthy. So when we do that, we keep them off to the side. We medicate them. You know, we observe them. We try to make sure that they are being sold to the best health as possible. That's and, awesome. Um, and we always tell our customers that a bowl is not a suitable environment for that at long term. So. I'm a guppy guy and I see a guppy sign. Guppy trade in guidelines. Yes. All right. So we do have a trade in policy with livestock. Where right. We give typically one third of the retail value in a store credit. In a store. That's so, that's pretty good. Yeah. Better than most, I would say. Yeah. I mean, we try. We want to make people happy. That's yep. And lots of information on yeah. plecos. Well, you have to remember. You know, we're hobbyists, so we'd love to learn about this kind of stuff. We're always looking at articles, magazines, research places, finding new information, and then sharing that with our associates. You know, if we can find it, we'll put it up. Fantastic. Information is awesome. And so I see we have some food over here. Do you need to get here? Do. Please go ahead. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> They're actually open and working and taking yes. their time out to talk to me. Yes. So that's where we keep our nets. We keep it in net soap to prevent the spread of disease. Net soap? Then, yes. Tell me about net soap. Sure. So net soap is a, a sanitization product. And when used um, in small quantities, it keeps away parasites, bacteria, things like that from being transferred from tank to tank. You know, in a busy store, we have 200 tanks and we have a bunch of nets going in and out of them. So every time we use one, we put it right into the net soap. That way, if there is something that we haven't figured out, it doesn't get transferred. That's we also fantastic. do that with our collection cups as well. We keep them in a container full of water and net soap, which is unlike a lot of other. That, that's fantastic. I've, I don't think I've ever seen that. And I've probably done 20 fish store tours in the United States. There you go. You know, here at Bluefish, we've been here almost 25 years, and wow. uh, we picked up a lot of things along the way. And uh, we've talked to a lot of different people. We regularly.
Andy Sim Associates offer trainings at the Georgia Aquarium. Wow. Uh, we even have some associates that used to work here that now work for the Georgia Aquarium. So I see some foods up here. I guess this is what you feed the tanks? This is a small portion of what we feed them. We have food all over the place. So we've already had a discussion about Dr. Basilier. I've, I use Dr. Basilier in my fish room sometimes, but you love it. Yes. Tell, can you tell me that story about yeah. your saltwater tank? Yeah, I'd be happy to. So uh, I've been doing this probably 10 or 11 years now. And in all of that time, I've always had an open mind for foods. You know, food is the, the very backbone of the healthy environment that we try to give to our fish. And that includes my fish at home. You know, I'm really attached to them. So um, when Lou Eckes of Tropic Marin came to me and told me about this food, I was a little susceptible, but uh, I wanted to see how it was. I wanted to try it. So I have a 300 gallon saltwater aquarium at home and on there is an automatic feeder that had New Life Spectrum foods in there. What I did was a simple test. I took out the New Life Spectrum foods and I put in the Dr. Basilier, the Trovella formula, and uh, just swapped it out. I didn't change the schedule. I didn't change the amount that was going into the aquarium. I didn't change my frozen food schedule, my seaweed schedule. I didn't change anything else. I just left the auto feeder to do what it has been doing for years so that I could see the results. I would say within about three to four weeks, I saw a noticeable improvement in not only color, but the weight of my fish. And we're talking about fish that I've had five or six years now, and these are large fish, tangs, angels, butterflies, things like that. I couldn't be more happy with the food, and in all of my time, I really truly believe that. That it might be the best, I don't <laughs> want to say commercial, but commercial <laughs> right. for fish food. Well, feel and, free to pay me, you know, <laughs> we're at a fish store. So. And then I see Sarah and some tropical, yes. and what is this beef heart flake? So we have a lot of foods here that uh, we buy in bulk, we make ourselves, we formulate them, and we sell them. Beef heart flake is just that. It's uh, very similar to the beef heart frozen food, only in flake form. For customers that want to give their, uh, you know, larger cichlids or discus a little bit more protein. Really? And do you have, like, specs on it that I could see if I wanted to buy some? Mm, I don't know that I would have that offhand. I would probably have to send that to you. Okay, yeah. all right. Hey, so I see some guppies over here. Is this your guppy section? Um, this is a small portion of it. We tend to keep all of the guppies in the middle row on this wall just because they're one of our most popular fish and people can see them easy. Yeah. These are pretty healthy looking male guppies. We definitely try. We get a lot of different types in as well. We're a bit low at the moment, but it's not unusual for you to find 15 different color variants. Really? Uh, with really strong genetics too. We get them imported directly from um, overseas. I don't know the exact ways, but... Yeah. Do you uh, sell males and females? We do. We sell males and females. We keep them separated unless we get in a trade-in of a large quantity. Sure. You know, then we'll set them aside and sell them as it is. Um, but we always try to make sure our customers know everything about the fish that they buy, and that includes gender if we can provide that. Right, right. Well, guppies are pretty easy. I would say so. Yeah, yeah. And uh, do you sell a lot of guppies? We do sell a lot of guppies. I would estimate easy 150 a week on our slow weeks. Wow. Easily double that in the winter when uh, you could barely walk in this place because there's so many people. Really? I wish I was here in the winter. I'm gonna have to come back. Please do. <laughs> you know, so, we're always changing things, so we're not like great. So I've been checking out this 450-ish gallon tank. Why don't you tell me about it? What's in it? Sure. So. Um, this is one of our favorite tanks with some of our favorite fish. We have a lot of uh, red I'm just going to interrupt. I love all the growth on the wood. Yes. That's probably oh my, my favorite part. It's taken years to do it. And even though it's just algae, we really like it. We yeah, yeah. It. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, so a lot of our favorite fish are in here. You know, fish that we want to showcase as not only getting large, but being compatible. One of the most difficult things with cichlids and one of the most common questions we get is what can I put with them? Which cichlids can go where? So in here we have just a, a small example of some of the common ones that tend to be a little nicer. Uh, we have gold spot sevrums, we have Denisoni barbs, we have geophagus, both redhead spahos, um, and a couple of others uh, when we can get our hands on them, of course. And then our favorite tetra, Congo tetras. And then you Those have to have huge. electric blue cars in there too. Yeah, you just yeah. have to. You, know, you don't get that kind of color. And then we recently, within the last year or so, put in some clown luches because we really want to showcase our customers how large they can really get. Oh, yeah. And then we also want to show our customers their proper behavior. You know, they're schooling fish. They have a very unique behavior that you don't see when you have one or two of them in a small 55 gallon tank. 
So this is what we try to do. And then we have some oddballs, some eels, tire track, fire eels, things like that. Um, and they lay eggs all the time, some of the fish in here. We pull them out and we do root. We breed a lot of fish here. Very cool. What do you feed this thing? Oh, what don't we feed them would be a better question. Uh, <laughs> primary diet is frozen food, so blood worms, uh, krill on occasion. Uh, we feed a lot of different flakes and pellets, especially the Dr. Basilier flakes and Sarah flakes. Um, we're a really big fan of Dainichi cichlid foods as well, so we feed that to the tank. Um, pretty much just a little bit of everything because we have so many different types of fish in here. Very cool. I did see a huge freezer. Can we go look at it? So here is their food aisle and they have their own brand of flake food. Lots of different kinds, earthworm, bloodworm, beef heart, black worm, spirulina, tropical, color, and algae wafers. They carry, looks like Ocean Nutrition and some Hikari, and there's some Rapashi down there. Wait till you see this freezer full of frozen food. Are you ready? Ta-da! They have Hikari. They have Ocean Nutrition. They have San Francisco Bay. And what is what are these flats? So um, these are just Hikari. Okay. Flats, Mysis, Krill, um, Silver Sides, Spirulina Brine, things like that. And um, then the LRS looks like it's almost sold out. Yes. So I have been slacking and I haven't been doing it. You're fired. It should be. <laughs> um, but we carry and we sell a lot of LRS foods, which is primarily salt. Yeah. And then they have frozen rodents for Reptiles, I'm Snakes, assuming. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We have a small reptile section. We'll see that a little later, maybe. Here's all their water chemicals and additives. Yes. And then there's more food. Look at the ginormous Dr. Basilier section. Now, I know Dr. Basilier from my friends Martin and Lisa at Super Cichlids, but I don't know if they carry these big ginormous tubs. You certainly like it. And do you like the Sarah line? Yeah, we like the Sarah line a lot. Um, their ingredient list really separates them from some of the more common foods, such as Hikari. Um, it's just, it's a food we've had a lot of success with. And uh, as a company, they've had really positive relations. Um, you know, they're really supportive with their, their customers. The Sarah line. Sarah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And Dr. Basilier is new, as we said. Yes, Dr. Basilier is new, but it has done phenomenal. And then they have bug bites. Everyone has bug bites and aquion. And then over here we have the Hokari section, the normal Hokari, and then some North Fin. Mm -hmm. I like North Fin. And now I've seen this before, but I'm not a cichlid guy. Sure. My subscribers know I don't particularly care for cichlids, <laughs> although I have angels and I have a flower horn, which, you know, some people sure. would say it doesn't count, but sure. so tell me about this. Well, so cichlids are not my area of expertise, and I'd be more than happy to help people if I can, but I'm definitely not the best person to talk to when it comes to that. Um, but again, just like all of the other foods that we sell and we promote, we really believe in not only the results that we've had here in the store, because we use and we test everything that we carry, but also the ingredients and the company. You know, the way the company interacts with us, the way that they respond to our issues, our inquiries, that really sets them apart from other companies. And if they are not on top of their game with that, we're just not going to do it. That's well said. And here is a tank. And I told you to before, so when I first got here, we started talking a little bit, and Sean just got back, uh, coincidentally, from Japan. And uh, I said, this is a tank that you would see in a store in Japan. <laughs> this is fantastic. Can you tell me about it? Yeah, um, so it's kind of one of our lower tech planted aquariums. Um, being that we do carry a lot of different things for the types of tanks that we sell, you know, we always try to have a display with the different products that way we can see how they do. So on here we chose one of Ecotech's Radeon's, the freshwater variants to put on here. And we're also running a fluval canister filter. And then we do a full line of uh, aqua vitro dosing chemicals. Um, and all of that is figured out by our freshwater expert. Her name is Patty. She's actually not here at the moment, but she is the one that has her hands on all of these freshwater things that we see. And she is the one to thank for them. I mean, amazing. It looks fantastic. Yeah, she does an amazing job. Uh, we appreciate her. So, how many tanks do you have here? Oh boy. Um, tough question. I'm sorry. That, no, that is a very tough question. I would say, let's see, two, four, six, eight. Um, I'd say we'd, we'd have about 130 freshwater tanks, uh, which is a really rough estimate. Um, that's tanks to sell out of. 
as well. And then how much salt water do you have? In salt water we have we have about 15 systems. He actually took his shoes off to finish counting. <laughs> yeah, uh, we, ha we have 15 systems, uh, actually 16 systems, and uh, each system is about 150 to, to 300 gallons. Um, saltwater fish, they require just a slightly different setup. They need a little bit more water, so uh, we just have a few tanks on each system rather than the individual tanks that we have in these guys. So tell me about this red X. So. Um, red X means that the tank is under observation for one reason or another. All of the fish we get in, we quarantine and we observe, and that's the majority of the red X's that you see before we sell them. But if we do see an issue, which is inevitable in yep. kind of fish yep. environment, we put an X on them so that A, our customers see the X and ask us about it, and B, our customers know that they're under observation for one reason or another. And like I said, most of that is just a new arrival. We order in hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of fish a week. We quarantine all of them. Uh, most of them happen to be quarantined in a separate section, um, but sometimes we do it out here as well. So uh, quarantining is fantastic, and the fact that you tell the public, hey, we're watching these fish, mm -hmm. so don't buy them, is awesome. Yeah, I mean, like I said, the our biggest concern is that our customers are happy with their fish, happy with us, happy with their experience. You know, we're hobbyists, which means we started out in the same way as them, and so we treat them the way that we would have wanted to be treated. And we're not going to sell fish that, that are, are visibly ill or that have some sort of issue because A, nobody's happy in that regard, and B, it just it doesn't make for a positive customer interaction. Yeah. We're going to have more issues to deal with than we would if we would just quarantine the fish, medicate the fish. Okay, so I've been staring at this chart, which mm -hmm. I think I've seen before. Yeah, you probably have. It's just, it's just a basic chart. Sometimes there are so many customers here that we are not able to answer some of these smaller questions as quick as we would like. So we try to put a lot of resources around that people can read and gather some information on their own, and then they know better how to ask us or how to go about it. Um, and we always tell our customers, this is just a general guideline. You know, there's a lot of exceptions to every rule, and uh, there's no way to put it all in a chart. So this is just what can go together, what may work, what shouldn't go together. I would say this is the most common recommendation for fish compatibility. Yeah, fish compatibility is the word I was looking for, and I couldn't there come. You go. I couldn't think of it. If I didn't say it 50 times a day every <laughs> day, I probably would forget it too. All right, I'm I'm gonna walk over here. Got the glowfish. I was a glow, against glowfish at first, and I'm pro glowfish now. Excellent. So we do not sell any fish that are dyed or right, right. altered by any way. And that's um, why I'm pro glowfish. Yes, because they are genetically engineered. <laughs> right. Just like a guppy or a puppy or yeah. a flower horn. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. The ecological benefits that have come from glowfish have actually been really substantial. You know, the the idea wasn't just a, oh, how can we make a fish glow? It was, uh, we have a very specific purpose. We need to identify what's going on in this waterway. So they took zebra fish, zebra danios, which mm -hmm. is one of the most researched fish on the planet, and figured out how to put it, uh, how, to, how to genetically engineer it so that it would show up in a waterway that was otherwise, you know, hard to see, hard to study. I didn't know that. Came from. I didn't know that's why they did that. And they're, they're coming out with glow bettas. Yeah, I mean, they've tried to come out with other things like glow angels in the past, but I think they ran into some issues. <laughs> we don't see the glow sharks much anymore, but those are available. Yeah. We just see the, the Danios, the Tetras, and the Barbs. So this is a 300-ish gallon yeah, acrylic three tank? 3 to 350 acrylic, yep. Um, this tank has been uh, in operation for probably 30 to 35 years, I would say, uh, before we got it. You know, we haven't been around that long. Um, but we're actually in the process of breaking it down slowly and selling it off. We want to put a new display here. We want to get a new tank. We want to get a new stand, you know, all of that. I so think a 300-gallon tank with a 1,000 guppies is the way you should go. <laughs> I'll, I'll propose that to the freshwater manager. And I know a guy where you can get guppies from. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so hang on back filters for all these? I no. see some under gravel. Yeah, just a couple of them. So um, all of our tanks have under gravel filters just to give them uh, oxygen. And because we do water changes twice a week, it makes it really easy to pull out that waste. We do have a few tanks here on the end that we showcase some hang on the back filters. 
because again, we don't sell anything that we don't use or trial here in the store. Makes so sense. It just makes it really easy to have a couple of tanks on the end with a few hanging in the back filters. Otherwise, our primary recommendation for freshwater tanks are canister filters. And of course, some setups do not make use of the canister filter super well, so then we would default back to the back filter. Fantastic. And some systems for salt water, of course. <laughs> So this is the cichlid section? Yeah, so we keep our cichlids kind of uh, separated from the more peaceful fish so that we can <laughs> easier, uh, have an easier time directing our customers to where they should be looking. Sure, sure. Uh, and then we also have some resources posted around like, you know, a cool chart of Lake Malawi cichlids and a cool chart of Lake Tanganyika cichlids. Another bagging station? Yes. So like I mentioned in the winter, when we are so busy, we cannot even move. It's impossible for us to grab a cichlid here and walk all the way that way and back. Right. Because we'll have five associates bagging over there. So this gets utilized mostly in the winter, but, you know, whenever it's going Oh my gosh, this tank is so dirty. <laughs> Just kidding. Look at all the snails. Brackish too. water. I love snails, though. Because yeah. my flower horn, who's named Chewy, Love snails. I love it. My seven year old will come to my fish room, catch snails, and give them to Chewy. That's awesome. Yeah. So there's a little pleco. Common? It is a common pleco. Yeah. So we do not order in common plecos, we get them on trades <laughs> and we find homes for them. Yeah, yeah. And there's a little Oscar that I'm sure somebody didn't realize when it was this big, mm -hmm. how big it would get. And just best friends with another one. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's of course. How it is. Of course. Yep. So that was a trade in. We get it. We put it on quarantine. We observe it. We feed it. Make sure it's eating well. Um, one thing that we do here is we do not advocate for the feeding of live foods. Um, we don't feed goldfish. We don't feed guppies. We don't feed uh, you know minnows, rosy reds. We don't feed any of that unless the fish itself absolutely needs it or that's all it's used to eating. So when we get Oscars in, we feed them whole diets, you know, full of foods. Yeah. We don't feed them goldfish and we don't recommend it. We don't even sell them for feeding. So I originally bought Chewy, my flower horn. He's a super red dragon. Cause I thought it was cool. But then I'm like, well, what do I do with culls? I'll give them to Chewy, but they're all healthy. Mm -hmm. So that's okay. I think at least. Yeah. Oh, well that's completely different. Um, guppies definitely have more nutritional value than say goldfish. But the problem is people don't really see that. They see big fish, so they feed them. Right. You know, but right. unfortunately goldfish are extremely fatty and they cause more problems than benefits. So we just don't recommend them. So a brackish water molly tank. Yeah. Absolutely. By the way, these mollies look spectacular. <laughs> so being the superstar that we are, you know, we offer fish from fresh water, brackish water, salt water, but that means we have to have brackish water environments because people want these fish and we're absolutely not going to let them go home with a brackish water fish and put it in their fresh water tank. So the only way to do that is to have a brackish water on hand. A lot of stores will say, oh, well, these are brackish water fish, but they can live in fresh water for a while. So we do that. Here yeah, that's not a good um, thing. But mollies are really, really good algae eaters. They eat algae like yep. crazy. So um, we keep a lot of brackish water ones around because people do have brackish water tanks with algae. But also, they can transition to salt water a lot easier yeah. if they're coming from brackish water. Not to mention the fact that they are just so much healthier, so much more lively in that brackish water environment. Yeah, yeah. They look spectacular. We definitely try. And then look at this little guy. So I'm going to try not to scare him, but there's my hand and there's how big he is so that's our sense phylum he was a trade-in as well wow a bit of a harder sell yeah yeah i, I would imagine more cichlids over here yeah. so yeah my, i don't i don't really care although there's okay. a, there's one the tropical cichlids and not african cichlids which in <laughs> my opinion are a little cooler yes definitely New World cichlids mm -hmm. are cooler. I, I like some dwarf cichlids too. I like, love dwarf cichlids. Yeah, yeah. Pistos, rams. Yes, pistos, rams. I'm considering changing my angel community tank to a dwarf cichlid tank. Now, why is the light off? Is, do we have a problem? Um, yeah, I think it went out recently. We've just been so busy. <laughs> Replace it. Okay. Um, but we're also making a change over to LED lighting. Ah, uh, yeah. We've been around for over 25 years, and that means a lot of our stuff is a, is a little outdated. So in order to be more environmentally friendly, environmentally conscious, you know, we're trying to switch out to LEDs. Um, just as we do, we recycle everything that we can. We use paper bags. We don't use plastic bags. Um, you know, we do everything we can to make the environment better. Fantastic. And so I was walking around before when you guys were super busy mm -hmm. and I saw this cool turtle. <laughs> now in New Jersey, it's illegal to sell turtles. Okay. You can keep them, but you can't buy them. Can't buy them, yeah. sure. 
there's a lot of laws in turtles, especially here in Michigan where we have a lot of native turtles. Um, and we do order in turtles, but most of our turtles that we get are actually trade-ins. People don't realize how large they get and the requirements that they have. So just like our fish, we're always here to help customers if they find themselves with unwanted pets. Now here in Michigan, turtles do have to be over four inches to legally sell and legally purchase. And here's a tortoise that's not for sale. These are our store pets, Sal and Sophie. Oh, I only courses. saw one, yep. and then the other one's there in the boom, car. there's a second one. <laughs> so this is their daytime pen. Um, they sleep in here as well, but uh, during the day or when there's not many people here, we'll take them out and let them wander around. Really? Get some exercise. That's pretty cool. That is, yeah, that's really we're cool. actually in the process of building a much larger setup for them. It's going to take pretty much this whole wall here. Really? And um, we'll get our plants back in here and yeah. They'll probably like that. I think so. All right, so they're, coming. They're about 30 years old. Wow. Right now, I would say. How old will they get? Mm, red footed tortoises. It's not unheard of for them to live well into their 80s. Wow. Uh, and even longer than that. It really depends on care, especially early on in their lives. And some lizards. So lizards? Frogs. frogs. Yep. So we sell and we breed a lot of poison dart frogs. So where can I see one? Oh, wow. A little bit, there's one looking right at your camera. Point the camera down. Oh, look at that. <laughs> hey. <laughs> That's pretty cool. It is cool. And then we have the salt water. Wow, I didn't realize there was this back there. Yeah, it's we'll pretty big. Let's take, a, it's ginormous. Let's take a quick look. Yeah, so. Salt water is my specialty. Yeah, I was gonna say, this is your wheelhouse. Yes, so this is a new reef set up that we've recently put into our store. It's a Red Sea Reefer. It's an amazing tank, amazing quality, amazing features. We could not be happier with it. But it's still a young reef, so it's still developing. We're still working on adding things to it. And so, 200 gallons, 175? Um, it is 132 gallons. 130, I wasn't even close. I was using letters and stuff. <laughs> so clownfish are one of my favorite fish. Everyone loves clownfish. I, but I like the clowns like this that are not your normal Nemo yeah. clown. Yeah. <laughs> So, and so I, I, I may or may not be starting a saltwater fish when I get back from saltwater tank when I get back from Japan. Absolutely. Maybe. That sounds like an amazing idea. <laughs> if you need some help with that, you don't need. I to will help. definitely be reaching out for help. <laughs> so, any cool fish I need to show here, hmm. like that black and white clown. <laughs> That thing is so cool with the red little nose. Oh my gosh. Yep. How much is that? So that would be $74.99 uh, just because it's an unusual color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's larger. You know, if I were to order that fish in, it would be a half to a third of the size and it just, it just wouldn't compete. So um, so you you guys raised it that big or someone traded it in? Or? That pair was actually a trade-in, yep. Wow. That pair and, was a trade-in. And they breed pretty easily? Um, they lay eggs very easily. I wouldn't say that they breed easily uh, because they actually require some very specific things in the water column when they are growing, you know, right after they're hatching. So, um, like most fish, they require a very specific type of plankton called a rotifer. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you have to provide that to them if you're going to breed them. But they'll lay eggs no problem in captivity. It, it happens for just about anybody that has healthy pawnfish. And seahorses? Mm -hmm. yep. so are they as cool horses. as I think they are? Uh, they're really amazing, yeah. Especially when they're not in a little cup. Are, are they yeah. difficult to care for? Mm, I would not say difficult. I would say a little more consuming than um, other fish. You know, they really can't be with most types of fish. They really can't be with most types of coral. They need a calmer environment, but the environment has to be well filtered. Uh, it needs to be well cycled. A lot of people make that mistake. Your tank needs to be fully cycled first. Um, is but, cycling a saltwater tank similar to a freshwater tank? Very similar. In fact, I would even go as far as to say that it might be easier to do, especially with recent advances in technology from bottled bacteria products to uh, live rock. You could just come to our store, pick up, put into your aquarium, and then have some fully established bacteria to start your cycle. Yeah, so I have some lava rock that I bought from Third Planet Treasures, the rock lady. Her name is nice. Ruth. 
and um, I was going to give it to my local fish store, put it in their salt system to start colonizing. Not a bad idea. Okay, how yeah. long would it take on average for that to start to happen? Um, in a fully established reef environment, um, I would say within about one to three months, those rocks will be in really good condition to help you start up your aquarium. Some people argue though that it can take anywhere from six months, even up to two years, for a rock to really establish, really become live rock. And I would definitely agree with that because much like your aquarium, rock goes through a bunch of different stages and cycles where they grow different types of bacteria, sponges, invertebrates, all sorts of that. And it really depends on the type of system that you're growing that in. You know, so it could take less time, it could take more time. But if I were you, I would give it about three months and then you'll know you will have rock that's really, really well established. Fantastic. All right, so I'm here at another amazing freshwater display. Sean, can you tell me a little bit about this? Sure, so this is our high-tech planted display. On this tank, we inject CO2, we have high output T5 light bulbs on it, and we have the full dosing schedule of the aqua vitro planted products, okay? So we use this tank as a way to display the capabilities of these things. You know, we don't use or sell anything that we don't test here in the store. So that includes CO2 aquariums, um, regulators, you know, all of that. We need to make sure that they work and that they do what they claim to do. Now, this tank is one of our favorites because it's one of the first ones that people see when they walk in. And it's also the best tank to really see uh, Patty, the freshwater manager, her skills as an aquarist. Um, unfortunately, we did recently redo this tank about less than a month, I would say. We tore it down. I was going to say, it, it doesn't look that mature. Yeah, it's not. It's not. Um, unfortunately, it's an acrylic tank and it scratches pretty easily. So we buffed it out and we reset it up and uh, you know, we couldn't be happier. Honestly, the best part about it is watching it grow into itself. Yeah, it's a really nice looking tank. Come back in a couple months, it'll be fully grown in, it'll look completely different. You'll have to send me a picture. Yes, I will do that. Do you remind me? I just want to say thank you so much for you and your staff spending time and letting me film and annoy everyone with questions. Oh, no problem. And honestly, and I'm saying this on film, this is one of the best fish stores I've ever seen. Well, that's incredible. I really appreciate that. No problem.